I'm Matt Fotis. I'm an associate professor of theater, and I am the director of our production of The Revolutionists. My name is Jen Rock, and I'm a professor of theater, and I am the lighting designer for this show. The Revolutionists is a play by Lauren Gunderson. It is about four women in the French Revolution's reign of terror, and they are trying to figure out what it means to be a revolutionary, what it means to have equal rights, what it means to be a part of a democracy. And gosh, it just seemed like all of those questions were awfully relevant in 2024 in America. Uh, the Revolutionists is about a bunch of women working together. Um, and what's exciting about it is to see our students coming together and working together and really challenging themselves and building something really creative. I think it's really written for everyone. It's very accessible and it's, while it, it does take place during the French Revolution, it really is about us. It's about all of us and it's about society. So I think that people will connect with it and recognize that it's not just about the French Revolution, but it really is about all of us and our society here as well. Yeah, so three of the four uh, women are actual historical figures. Uh, one of them you probably know is Marie Antoinette, and the other two are perhaps a little less known. The playwright Olympe de Gouges and the uh, assassin Charlotte Corday. And um, so part of our process then has been actually sort of trying to line up what's in the script with these women and what, what, what their actual lives were like, right, and how they connect. Um, and the idea is that Olympe de Gouge is sort of uh, summoning and creating these characters uh, in her mind who all would have been alive, obviously, and were part of the French Revolution. And so she's sort of putting them together in her story of how she became a revolutionary figure in the French Revolution. Revolution, revolution. I think, I actually think Charlotte has a big turning point in this play that's really important. Um, she's so determined to accomplish what she needs to accomplish in order to play her part in the revolution. And then after she does it, she has some regrets and some fear that maybe she didn't do what she should have done and it was all a mistake. And I think that ultimately she has to come to terms with her own decisions and, and accept that what she did was, was the right thing that she needed to do. Yeah, so it's sort of a play about a playwright writing a play who's a real playwright who didn't write a play but is part of a real life thing that actually happened that's now a play. One of the things that drew me to the play is that it's a comedy. And it's a comedy where three of the characters, spoiler alert, get beheaded. Um, but it's still really, fun, really funny. Um, and so it, uh, we've talked a lot, a lot about this in, in rehearsal. There's a lot of moments where it's sort of laughing to keep from dying, laughing to keep from crying type of things. So it's using comedy and humor as a way in to then talk about really big issues about uh, equality, about, um, you know, wh when we're fighting for something, you know, when do the ends justify the means, uh, what happens when you're not sure what side of the fight you're even on anymore. Um, and so the, the sort of key to that whole world and those discussions is humor. And so there's a lot of really funny moments in the play. There are some not so funny moments in the play. But the idea is that humor is helping us to be able to talk about some of this stuff. So this play is funny. So for me, that means I want to create a bright, happy environment that supports the comedic atmosphere. Uh, there's a saying in theater that if you can't see them, you can't hear them. So I want to make sure that everybody is seen very well. Um, and so that we can hear all the great jokes. And then what's exciting about this play is there are a couple moments towards the end where I get to sort of lift the characters up with lighting and figuring out how I'm going to accomplish that is, uh, it's an exciting challenge. One of the things it, that happens in this play, uh, one of the things that comes up is the equal rights of all citizens. And part of the argument that we're making is that women are also, should also have those equal rights. And I, th I think that people of the time period, frankly, would 
would probably react to it exactly the way they reacted to these events in real life, which um, unfortunately did not go well for the heroines of our story. We've spent a lot of time delving into that world and the play really, no pun intended, kind of revolves around three revolutions, right? So the American Revolution, the French Revolution, and then the Haitian Revolution. And so we spent a lot of time in rehearsal and our dramaturg, Julia Poole, did an amazing job pulling in all sorts of information. So we spent uh, a good two weeks really just learning about the different revolutions, learning about these characters. Um, you know, so why is this stuff happening in the play that's ha happening? You know, what, uh, what is the Haitian Revolution? Um, and how is it connected to France? And how is the French Revolution connected to America? And how is it all connected to now? So we spent a lot of time, um, you know, doing some old school learning um, and, and talking about these things. And as the you know, director, um, you know, my work on that just started earlier than everybody else's. But, and so part of the job then is when the cast gets there is like, let's all make sure we're all on the same page. I think um, part of what's exciting about a, a historically based play like this is diving into some of the research surrounding the play. Um, I will admit that I've learned a lot about the French Revolution um, in doing this work because that helped me to understand who the characters are that are based on these historical figures. And then you have the one character who is not a historical figure. And um, that's exciting. She. Because she is her own character, she is the work of the playwright, and so she can serve that um, purpose of sort of moving the story along without being tied to the historical facts. So it's a four-person cast. We have um, currently we have one understudy. We're, we're looking to get a second, but um, it's a four-person cast. It's a small crew, so it's been um, really cool because you know they're. Everybody has a lot of time together, um, and you know they're all really invested in the show. Not that people aren't always invested in the show, but you know um, everybody's got a really big role. Um, so you know everybody's pretty much at every rehearsal, um, and so it's been really nice as sort of like forming this really sort of cohesive little family um, to talk about beheadings. <laughs> The big thing for me is always making sure that we're all on the same team um, and that we're all telling the same story uh, and so that really lends to a lot of ensemble building, right? playing games, doing stuff where we're all working together. We, we do this game called Round of Applause where we all just sort of clap at the same time and we pass it around and it's just sort of this idea of all being in sync. Um, and then in terms of you know the, the actors themselves, it's, you know, my job is really to sort of put them in positions where they can succeed. And so that starts with casting, um, right? So trying to, to fit actors into roles um, where you know they can do a good job. Um, where, so like the um, actress who's playing Olympe de Gouge, uh, Aliyah Rojas is uh, she's a writer herself, but she's very funny, she's very quick, she's very sarcastic and sardonic. And so the, that, you know, those skills that she already has and takes right, can inform Olymp and cre help her create that sort of character using some of the stuff she's already really good at. Um, and it's about sort of then marrying right, those skills to that character and the other actor's skills to her character and then sort of seeing how those two come together. And we're really lucky, um, you know, we have four amazing actresses in the show. So they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting and I just get to sit back and be like, that was good, do it again. <laughs> the majority, well, the play's actually happening in the Limp de Gouge's head. Spoiler, not really. Most of the action of the play then plays out in her study, um, which we've sort of uh, set up as a writing room and so there's a big writing desk uh, that sort of anchors the whole stage and so that's where most of the action of the play takes place. Um, there are a few times where we leave that study. Um, one of the sort of biggest, you know, both literal uh, things hanging over people and metaphorical things is the guillotine 
um, right, and the sort of execution stage. And so we have tried to build that into the design of the show. Um, we've tried to play with right angles and their sort of guillotine lines everywhere without there actually being like a literal guillotine for obvious reasons. Um, so that is sort of looming over everything, but most of the play plays out in her study. And it, and that sort of illuminates one of the big um, themes of the play is, you know, is the idea of action. Uh, and, you know, so Charlotte Corday is taking action, right? She's an assassin, she's taking action. And Olymp is trying to figure out how can she play a part in the revolution. A little bit of that idea, you know, that old sort of, it's the pen mightier than the sword kind of a thing, where Olymp is trying to figure out how can she use her voice as a, and her sort of, you know, writing as a way to advance what she believes is really important. For me, what I take away from this play is that we have to work together and that we have to support each other and that we have to be willing to do what's difficult even when we're afraid. And that's the only way that we as a society can move forward. So the viewer coming into this should not really be all that much worried about what they do or don't know about the French Revolution. Because this play is not about the French Revolution. This play is about America right now. It just happens to be set in the French Revolution. And so I think the thing to be thinking about is um, what role do each of us play in the success or failure of our democracy. Um, and that's really the thing that we're, that I as a director am really interested about this production in this moment in time. Um, and I think is the thing that I would like people to sort of leave the theater talking about um, is, you know, how do we make our democracy stronger and better um, for the next generation. My hope for the performance is that um, all everybody involved in it realizes all of the growth that they're making here in these you know weeks of rehearsal, all the big steps they're taking, all the things that they're doing now that they didn't think they could do uh, right six weeks ago. And I hope that it helps to sort of kick off this election year, which could be a nightmare of like cynicism and horribleness uh, and awfulness. And it helps us really have uh, worthwhile discussions about well what do we really want right, our government to be to do um, you know and how do we help facilitate that rather than just fighting about um, you know which old man we do or don't like. What's really exciting about this play is seeing really the way the students are excited about the project and making it their own and creating things and for example our, our sound designer is a student and I believe this is his first sound design. The way he has taken ownership of the sound design and he's composing things, he's finding sound effects, and he's really exploring the medium of sound as a storytelling device in a way that he hasn't previously. And to, to see him be able to do that while he's simultaneously the assistant director, I think it all right, it's really exciting because our students have those opportunities to really dive in deeply into anything they want to explore. Well, I think this shows um, that the domino players are uh, a really important part of the campus community and that the domino players are here even if you have no interest in being in a show to help spark conversation on campus um, as a way to sort of be a creative outlet for people. Um, as a way to engage in things that we might not normally talk about, um, right? So that's part of why I love comedies, because it lets us talk about things that we don't always talk about. And for, uh, you know, folks involved, this is a great example of, right, the amount of responsibility that you can take on here. Um, you know, these are four really big roles. They've got a lot of depth to them, a lot of meat to them. They've got a, the actresses have to do a ton of work um, right, to pull these off. Um, you know, our dramaturg essentially took five different, you know, self-taught courses in order to be like, this is what's happening. 
Um, so it's, you know, it, it shows kind of the level of uh, commitment we have and the way that you can really immerse yourself in right, theater and what we're doing. And then in six weeks, you can go be in your in town, which is a totally different thing. Je te glisse entre les toits. Je te glisse entre les toits. Je te glisse entre les toits. Je te glisse entre les toits.